We love our football talk. Raleigh Witcher knows that. He joins us from Vancouver, the chairman of the 2024 Grey Cup 111th edition. Hey, Raleigh, welcome to the RP Show, man. Uh, we we're all following the announcement last week where you guys rolled out the plans for the 2024 Grey Cup. Did it, what kind of reaction did you feel and did you go as well as you hoped it would? Hey, Rod. Yeah, I was so excited I clicked mute on this conversation, so apologies for that. How about uh, that? Re no problem. Really, 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 great, really great week last week. We've been working on that for about a year, uh, trying to get everything ready. So to unveil our festival plans to the public, you know, great reaction. People are excited. We've got some really exciting things that are going to happen at Grey Cup Festival, and it was a good, good start last week. Well, for those that might have missed it, and I feel like I have no idea how anybody could, maybe I'll ask you to recap that. But I will just say, I talked to some BC Lions people at Super Bowl, and they said Amar Doman wants to make this the biggest Grey Cup, not only in Vancouver history, but in CFL history. And it sounds like you're off to a great start. What do people need to know about it? Yeah, he, he does. Everything starts from the top. And our goal is to make it the best Grey Cup festival ever, as you mentioned. Uh, you know, we unveiled our festival plans. We're using both convention centers in Vancouver. We're building two zip lines as part of the festival uh, footprint. Uh, we're going to have concerts, stuff for families, uh, over 50 separate events and activities that are going to take place over the course of the week. And the corporate support has been tremendous so far. So we're excited to keep unveiling stuff as we go. But we're expecting this to be the biggest and the best. Why not? I think uh, you got to put it out there. And I think you guys have the opportunity to do it. I've never met Amar in person. We've had him on this show. But, but I can't wait to do that. But I want to ask you this. I'm always interested in the people we're interviewing. Raleigh, what makes you want to be the chairman of this Grey Cup? And what's your history with football in Vancouver out there? Yeah, I actually, I come from an events background. I was involved in hockey for a number of years. Um, always been a big BC Lions fan. And, you know, over the last couple of years with Amar taking over the ownership and the team on the upswing, um, I got an opportunity to be involved and, and to host an event in the city I live in. There's nothing better than that. And so, you know, being to a few great cups over the past, you know, decade, uh, being able to see it from afar, I just wanted to get involved and find a way to put on something for everybody. Uh, having something in your own community is, is very special, and this was a great opportunity. So I'm fortunate to be involved in this event. So the one that really seems to have caught people's ear or eye is the zip line component. You're going to have to tell me about that. Yeah, Vancouver actually has a, a history of zip lines at events. The 2010 Olympics, there was one over Robson Square in Vancouver. Um, and for whatever reason, people love, love the zip line. And so it's been done since then. I believe Edmonton's done it a couple of times at Grey Cups. Uh, but we thought, you know, why have one when you can have two? So we're doing two. We're doing one down the street uh, between the convention centers, and they're actually doing one over the water, uh, which has never been done before. And so, um, you know, there's nothing more exciting than being on a zip line and having people watch you fly over top of them and this is a cool opportunity for people to come experience it. And it's free. It's free for everybody. You know, beyond that, I was saying, I think, before you came on, I've been to three Vancouver Grey Cups, and every single one was staggering. It's a wonderful CFL city, unheralded in a lot of ways, but Amar's bringing it back. But it's the personalities, it's the CFL alumni. 2011, after the infamous Joe Cap, Angelo Mosca fight at the Legends Luncheon, I saw... Angie. Now, you are a Vancouver guy. You know, he was coming off the escalator in the convention center. I was going in, and he had his cane. And I said, Angie, that fight yesterday, was that real or is that staged? And he waved it right in my nose. He goes, I'll never tell. But that's the one thing is the alumni, right? The, 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 the personalities. And I'm sure there's got to be a way that you're going to incorporate all those guys. <laughs> There is. I mean, the, the CFL has got such a unique legacy of alumni and it's such a great history. And so we're working with the Alumni Association. There's going to be player appearances, signings. We do an alumni lunch as part of Grey Cup every year, and that's coming back uh, as part of our festivities. And any way we can involve alumni, we're trying to do that. Um, that's one of the things about this event is when I say we want to be bigger and better, we just want to provide more opportunity for alumni to be involved and for fans to interact because those, those stories, uh, the history, that's what makes this so special. That's what makes Grey Cup and Grey Cup Festival unique. And so we're working closely with the Alumni Association to provide those opportunities and uh, excited to partner with them on this event.
I'm getting excited just talking to you about it. And I want to, if I don't get a chance, thank you for being involved because I can see, I can feel your enthusiasm through the camera here. John in Edmonton writes in and he says, what, Riley, what big names are you planning to bring in like Hamilton did with Kerry uh, Underwood? He wants you to spill the beans already. What can you tell us, Riley? <laughs> Yeah, it's a little early for that, Rod. I can tell you we got some big names coming for sure, but uh, we're going to save that for maybe later in the summer. Um, you know, one, one thing, though, I can say is that there's going to be over 25 music acts over the course of the week, uh, local, regional, national names. So we're going to provide a bunch of free opportunities for people to watch music, and then there's going to be some paid opportunities as well. But uh, we're going to make sure entertainment's a huge portion of this festival. And uh, I would say stay tuned for some, some upcoming announcements for that. Well, I'll tell you what, um, you're obviously a football fan. I mean, while I am a football person, I didn't see the furor over the Taylor Swift thing with the Chiefs this year, but I would be a dummy not to understand how, night, how great it was to, enter, to, to uh, intertwine the two, right? Entertainment and football. It worked great guns. Bill in Regina says Vancouver has the weather for a zip line in November. No doubt about that. Jeff, the Stamps fan, says, can you recreate the glory of the 2014 Stampeder victory? Here's the interesting thing about all those great cups there. The Lions were in it in 2011. It was great, and they won it. And it, I'm, you probably wish they would, would be in it in 2024, but they don't have to be. There were still great cups, great, great cups. Didn't matter who was in the game, Riley. Agree or disagree? Yeah, I, I agree for sure. I mean, you can't bank on the home team being in it every year. It'd be nice for sure. Don't get me wrong. And I'm hoping that the mm. Lions are in it. Um, but that, again, that's the beauty of the Grey Cup is anybody can be in it. Fans travel from across the country every year, no matter where it is. And so, you know, my job is to make sure we put on a great show for everybody, whether the team's in it or not. Don't get me wrong. I love the Lions to be in it for sure. But uh, if they're not for whatever reason, whether it's Stamps fans or Elks fans, they're going to have a good opportunity to come to the Grey Cup and experience it. So, um, but I, I'd be lying if I said I, w I don't wish the Lions would be in it for sure, Rod. Well, you're a Lions fan. You admitted that. But you're also clearly a smart guy. And it's like if the Lions aren't in it, we can't have a... You know what I mean? It's, the show must go on and it's got to be bigger than ever. And I can't let you go without asking you this. I saw the, the, the uh, figure, 100 million is the goal to crack for economic impact for Vancouver. That would be a record. I follow this pretty closely. That's a lofty goal. Um, what makes you think you guys can hit that? Yeah, we, um, you know, we're taking the best of what's been done over the past great cups. You know, COVID threw a wrench in a few plans over the last couple of years and obviously economic impact wasn't as big. Uh, but we based it on some events that have happened in Vancouver and even those 2011, 2014 great cups, I believe they were over 80, 80 plus million. And so uh, with the number of events, the number of people we've, we've heard from that are expecting to come to town, um, you know, the hotel associations are helping us out here with some good hotel rates as well. We're expecting a huge influx of people and uh, we think people are ready to get together and just celebrate. And this is our opportunity. So we're expecting to be over 100 million for sure. And, uh, um, you know, the sky's the limit. Well, 9 million watched it last year on television. The Canadians love the Grey Cup. And I can tell Riley by chatting with you, it's in great hands. So anything you need from us? Let us know. We plan to be there, and uh, good luck with it. Yeah, thanks for your support as always, Rod. Really good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Riley Wichar, the, the uh, Great Cup Festival, the chairman of the 2024 111th Great Cup. Man, it's exciting.